The following video contains audio that some may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Carrie, and welcome back to our quick takes on the Crumbly trial for Jennifer Crumbly. Uh, day two, their digital forensic analysis came in and provided a ton of information, which I have and will be posting in different videos. This particular segment is this gentleman recounting that morning of being notified of what was going on and him getting down to the location. It's emotional and it just goes to show you that even those that didn't have children in the school were affected. This gentleman really touched my heart. You could tell early on that he was a father. Let's watch his testimony. I want us to back up a little bit and, and talk about your involvement, how you got involved in this case. Um, so November 30th, 2021, you were a detective in computer crimes? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you remember that day? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, were you working? Yes, sir. Okay. Where were you at at 12.51 p.m. on November 30th? At 12.51 p.m., I was sitting in my office, I believe, um, at the Oak County Sheriff's Office. Okay. Did you learn of the school shooting in Oxford? Yes, sir. Tell me how you learned that and what you did next. Um, our captain came in and, well, prior to that, our sergeant, who was off that day, had said uh, that there was a shooter at the high school. And we thought in the office, like, it was just somebody near the area that fired a long gun or something like that, you know, from a house and, you know, the cops, are, the police are going to show up and do their job. Um, and then probably a few minutes after that, our captain came in and said that there was a shooting at Oxford High School and the phrase used was all hands on deck. Okay. So what did you do? Uh, being uh, what is referred to in the business as a computer nerd, um, mm -hmm. you just grab your stuff, you know, your computer, your laptop, you know, your laptop, what you think you might need, what we had no idea what we were getting into. Um, and I knew Oxford was a long ways away from the Pontiac area. Uh, I figured by the time I got there, it was going to be long over and me and my partners were just going to do what we do. Okay. So do you have a, did you get a, a squad car? Did you get an unmarked car? No, I have an unmarked, uh, at the time I had an unmarked uh, van um, with the emergency lights and siren in it. So did you start heading north then? Yes, sir. All right. Tell me about that. Um, well, at first it didn't seem real. It's, uh, I remember pulling out of the parking lot and I looked to my left and there was, uh, some patrol cars coming around the corner. There's the medical examiner's office down there. And I'm like, then it like really came real. Like, holy crap. Like they, they know about it. It was the state police. I'm like, they know about it. Like this is, this is serious. I, it's, it's bigger than I could ever have imagined. Um, so I flipped my lights on at that point and just drove north. Okay. How fast were you going? As fast as the van will let me. How long did it take you to get there? I have no idea. It was, it seemed like eternity, I can tell you that much. So, Oxford High School, it's, it's a large school. It's, it's, it's one level. It's one story, rather. Yes, sir. Um, as far as area, it's got a pretty big footprint. Okay. So, where did you go when you pulled up? Um, when I was driving there, um, there was a lot of radio traffic, a lot. I remember I was actually at 24 and uh, uh, Lapeer Road, um, M24 Lapeer Road and Updike, and they called that uh, S1 was in custody. Um, and I was still, I know, a ways off from there. Um, but that, you, you know, we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know if there was a second shooter, a third shooter, a bomb planted somewhere. So, you know, it just didn't stop. Um, and uh, I drove, drove north on 24. Um, and it's, again, it seemed like eternity. And with every... Every half mile I drove, it seemed like there was another emergency vehicle falling in behind me. Yesterday was described as a caravan. Would that be accurate? Oh, it was definitely a caravan. I, there was one time we got into, I remember we were approaching a light, we were getting closer, and there was, uh, the light had just turned red. So cross traffic was going to start, which obviously a dangerous situation, being in a car. Actually, the white minivan that no one believes is a police car. Um, and so as I approached, I, I got um, up into the intersection. I inched my way in there to stop traffic and hold the intersection. And I counted every vehicle that went past me. There were 18 um, or SWAT trucks, ambulance, patrol cars from agencies that were nowhere even near our, our area. So tell me what you see when you pull up on the scene. Uh, like I said, there was 
there's a lot of chatter on the radio. I, I wasn't familiar, I'm not familiar with the area of Oxford at the time. I had no idea where the school was. Um, all I could hear was uh, the staging area and Ray Road. And so um, I'm just thinking, I'm just gonna drive north. I'm gonna follow this caravan. We're gonna go up there. And as soon as I see the mire, I'm gonna stop there because I have no idea where the heck I'm going. Um, I didn't bother putting in my GPS, of course. And uh, I turn onto Ray Road and all I see is I see uh, I see kids that look like my kids. There were girls wearing real, sm you know, small clothing. And uh, my one kid, I didn't have a shoe on. Um, and they were coming down the road, coming towards the mire um, and just like walking across the snow. And I remember I had, it, God, it was cold that day. I had two coats on and I was shaking when I got out of my car and there was kids just walking past me, dressed like anybody in this courtroom is right now with no, they're not ready for the, for the weather. So you said you went to the, the Meyer on Ray Road? Yes. Did you learn that's, that was the reunification point for parents and children? Uh, at the time, I didn't know that was a reunification point. I just I just saw that there were a ton of kids going there. Um, when I got out of my car, walked down there. Um, they were sending everybody down to the garden area to try to get you know the names of people that had gotten to that point. Um, and once I got, that was at the, that would be at the south end of the Myers. Once I got to the garden area, um, there were kids just everywhere, just, just standing in the cold or making their way into the, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. What did you do when you arrived? Where did you go? I, uh, like I said, I went to the garden area. I picked up on what they were trying to do. They, they were passing out notebooks, um, just to write down everybody's names and phone number, all the students that were coming in. Um, so I was, I, I first started just collecting that. Um, and then, um, they started, um, telling everybody, you know, we got to go outside and get all the kids inside because again, it was, it was freezing out there. And, um, so I go back outside and uh, I start like trying to direct people like to go inside and I know the, the trauma they just experienced. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to force them in the building. I'm not going to grab them and drag them in there. And I remember putting my arm on a couple of the kids' shoulders and like, they didn't, they didn't move. They didn't nudge. They didn't do anything. Um, there were parents there just standing there. There were some parents that had, had made it. Uh, reunified with their kids. Um, I remember seeing school buses pull up. School buses with who? Uh, students on it okay. for that had made it out of the school. Did you go to the school? Yes. Um, I was probably at the Meyer for like 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes maybe. Um, and then Detective uh, Jeff Enger had called me and said that he was uh, attempting to obtain the security footage from the school. Where does uh, Jeff Enger live? He's also a detective in the computer crimes unit, works with me, worked with me. So you were asked to go to the school? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and you said you had a familiarity with DVR systems, that's why you were called? Correct, yes, sir. Okay, so what was your specific role at this part of the investigation? Um, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't given a direct mission or anything at that time because they were, again, they were looking for a second bad guy or a third bad guy. Um, and so I just, I knew that people would want to know the, the bosses would want to know what happened. Like, how did, you know, where did it start? Who, who was it if they didn't know that? Or, or were there more people or whatever? So we just started attempting, started to look for uh, the shooter in, in the hallway that it started. Did you learn how many surveillance cameras were active in Oxford High School on November the 30th of 21? Yes, there's well over 90 of them. Okay. And so it was your job at that point or your role as you saw to identify who the shooter was. Correct. Okay, so how did you go about doing that? Um, we started in the hallway, the 200 hallway where it all started, um, in the bathroom that the shooter came out. And we just, we attempted to, to backtrack him going in there. Um, I remember it, it took us, it took us like 15 minutes to try to figure out because um, he had actually changed his clothes. We didn't know who the shooter was. We didn't know his name in the office at that time. He was in custody at the time, we didn't know. And I remember someone in the office, I. Someone saying, um, eventually giving us his name and then saying that he was in the school counselor's office earlier that day. So we, we went back to that time of day when he was going in out of the school counseling office to find out what he was actually wearing at that time. And we were able to follow him into the bathroom then. How long did that process take you? Well, because we didn't know what he was wearing. It took us 20 minutes to try to figure that out. 
<clears throat> now are you the person so you you backtrack to the, sh the point where the shooter walked into the bathroom that he emerged from to begin the shooting is that right correct yes sir okay so are you the person the investigator who actually put together the footage of the shooting itself yes sir so you're familiar with the path the shooter took in the school very much so yes i'm going to ask you to walk us through that so he said you told us that he went into a bathroom is that's the bathroom adjacent to room 258 correct yes okay tell us what happens next he uh <clears throat> he comes out of the bathroom um what i what i envision is he comes out of the bathroom with with a proud chest with his almost like his shoulders are back like he's he looked excited um he comes out of the bathroom and immediately to his left um is a uh uh a, a victim and he shoots the her in her in her neck and then um her boyfriend was there and shot her shot him in, in his uh he put his hand up and shot him in his mouth and that's right outside 258 yes sir what happened next um he then uh uh quickly turned his gun to uh, a group of four girls that were just standing there um uh, they he shot uh hannah saint julian um and uh she she immediately fell to the ground and then he continued shooting in the area that those girls were um and they sort of just sort of just like fell on top of each other uh, you know because they were they were hit as well May I first this? sure this is a map it's already been admitted you can use it to describe that's five um at this point it's 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 under a minute that all, all that shooting happened um and then so at that point obviously it, it, it must have really again kicked in for lack of a phrase to, to the victims in the hallway and they started running um then the shooter uh with just a one-arm grab just started just firing rounds down the hallway um with no regard for obviously anything and bullets are flying and um he uh there was There's one girl who is, uh, you see at the end of the hallway, um, she just, as the shooting starts, she, she drops down into the fetal position, uh, in an attempt to protect herself. And, uh, the, uh, the shooter runs up to her and just puts the gun right to her head. And, uh, you, uh, that was Madison. And you see her fall over. He then uh, goes around the hallway. And there's, at this time, all, all the kids have gotten out of the area. Most of the kids. Um, you see uh, two girls. Um, one stops at a classroom that, obviously, the, the victims inside have already um, locked the door. So you can't pull it open. You see her trying to tug on that door. And there's another girl um, with dark hair uh, that comes running up behind her. And like grabs her while the shooter is just shooting down the hallway um and then they they just take off running further down the hallway um then uh the now he's 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 rounded the corner um from where it all started um continues going down the hallway um i, I think he at that point he might have reloaded his gun um and continue down the hallway i'm sorry and then um he stops as he gets to like there's a courtyard what they call the the cubby uh jim worked when they call this area the cubby uh where the cameras are and you see uh tate near he comes in the door um and then just takes a left he not he must not have known what was going on um and that's when the shooter um leveled the gun um like if you were at a gun range and practicing level the gun um appeared to look down the sights of the gun um and fired around uh tate just fell instantly um uh he continues on down the hallway walks past tate doesn't care to acknowledge the fact that that even happened um i'm sorry uh 
prior to walking down the hallway, that's right. He, uh, while Tate's body was laying there, um, you see uh, the shooter with the gun still level fires another round and it causes Tate's body to jerk. Um, I don't know if you hit him in the hip or the, the backside or whatever, uh, Tate's body jerks. And uh, then the shooter walks past him. You see his feet at the top of the camera frame. You see there's not a camera that picks them up because they don't, if there's not enough movement, they don't start recording. But you see his feet stop in what I later found out to be um, a teacher's classroom. And he turns um, and then he fires into that classroom. Um, he continues on down the hallway, looking into classrooms and stuff like that. There was one, as he gets so far down the hallway, he had fired a couple rounds down the hallway. Um, once he gets to a certain point, all the all the children are gone at this point. The teachers had gotten them out of there and ran, you know, out, out of the building and um, out through the door, wherever the heck they could get out of there. Um, as he's coming back, you see him stop because the way that that classroom was, if, if you're walking away from it, it's on your right hand side. You don't see the classroom because it's actually behind you at this point. But as he's coming back, he's, he must have seen people hiding in a corner because he can now see through the window and he fires off a few rounds through that window. Um, he, uh, he, he, he keeps coming down. He's coming back down the hallway now at this point. Um, and then, uh, the assistant principal, uh, Gibson Marshall, I didn't know her at the time. Um, he walks right past her, um, and sort of, I, I, I don't know what she said to him, um, but if she said anything, but you see, you see a, like, the shooter as he's walking by and the guns in his hand and he sort of just turns his head and just, I don't know, I don't know why, but he turns his head and looks away from her, doesn't even look at her, doesn't acknowledge her after as he's walking past. Um, and then he continues on down the hallway um, and stops at the bathroom where uh, Justin was killed. Um, and just as a, just like an abrupt stop, like, okay, well, and he just turned right and went to the bathroom. So, <clears throat> I didn't ask you. I didn't tell you I was going to ask you that. You obviously have this committed to memory. Oh, yes. How many times have you uh, seen this footage? Like I said before, it's it's. I don't know. It's burned in my brain. And it was your responsibility to obtain that footage, to get the information to officials at the sheriff's office and federal law enforcement as well. Yes, sir. So you were the person that had to watch, rewind, watch, rewind over and over again. Countless times, yes. <clears throat> Judge, this might be a good time for a short break.